Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Tara here with a quick video for you today on what we feed our chickens. Well, and our ducks too for that matter, so this is going to be pretty easy. We've picked a cool spot outside by these busy guys, so I hope you can hear everything we're saying. What we suggest to you always uh, in terms of how we raise our animals or, or whatnot is I always tell you do your own homework. You need to do what's appropriate and what you feel right about doing and what's available in your area. What I tell you what I do up here doesn't mean it's what you're going to do down there or over there, whatever. So always do your own homework. But I'm going to go through everything for you real quick to give you an idea. And this looks like a lot if you can see this table. Um, but um, I don't do everything all at one time. I just want to give you a, an opportunity to see all that we do. The most basic fundamental thing that you want to do for your chickens, in my opinion, is you want to, you want to provide a, a really good feed for them and you want to give them opportunity to free range. We let our chickens pretty much free range all day long. Now we lock our chickens and our ducks up at night so when they go up, I lock them up. That's for their own protection against predators, okay? During the daytime, they have full opportunity in, in an enclosed area to free range for whatever they want to free range for. I personally think that's your best option, but nonetheless, what are things that you can give them to supplement, to feed and supplement them? So that's what we're gonna do. The first thing that I do, my chickens that are 18 weeks and older, that means that they are at a laying age or beginning to start to lay and whatnot, I feed them a non-GMO pellet feed, okay, that is by Tucker Milling. We've talked about Tucker before. We've been using their product for about nine months now. I use it um, for my ch as my chicken feed, and I also use a multi-species feed. That is what I feed my cow, and I also feed my goats. I have had zero issues with this feed. Um, it's fairly affordable for being non-GMO, and they love it. And uh, we're going to continue to to use this product. It does come in a pellet form in both, it, whether it is a multi-species or whether it's your chicken feed or your chicken poultry feed. Now, for your chickens, you want to stay with a 16% or higher protein level. I will never go below 16%. Um, if you go and you buy the actual crumbles, you can actually buy it in a crumble mix like this, so it's already mixed up and whatnot. You can buy it at 16%, sometimes 22%. A lot of folks like to buy the higher protein during a time in which their chickens are molting or maybe their egg production has come down. Um, I have only done that once or twice. I am finding that if I supplement them really, really well, I get to stick really well with my non-GMO feed. So let's talk about the things that you can supplement with. Before I do that though, I do want to let you know that I do use, again, another video where I'm talking about diatomaceous earth. I have been using diatomaceous earth for four years now. I use the white food grade. I buy it from Permaguard. I sprinkle it into each bag of feed as I open it and mix it. And once I get so far down, I sprinkle a little bit more. Um, it just depends on, you know, just a good dusting in there. I mix it up. It's probably maybe a half a cup or so, depending on what I'm doing. Um, sometimes if, um, if I have it, if I forgot to put it in there and I fed the chickens, I might dust inside the feeder just a little bit of DE. I do not have issues with parasites. Um, I just feel that it really modifies um, that in my barn or in my coops. You be the judge of that, but I just want to let you know that I feel that diatomaceous earth, a, an organic substance, has absolutely worked for us. So do your homework and do what's best for you. Um, but talking about other th ways that I supplement my hens, I make like what kind of like a power mix. I have um, over 120 chickens right now, and that's a lot to care for. So a lot of times when you see things that are suggested to you in terms of natural feeds and natural supplements, that works great if you have a small flock of 10, 12, 15, 20 chickens. Um, but when you start getting a lot of chickens and, or, and, a, and a large coop going, that can be very expensive. So what I do is I keep a really good baseline of foraging, um, a really good non-GMO feed, the DE, fresh water, all of that every single day. Now I do make a power mix or I might throw them some treats once a day. And in the summertime like you are seeing right now, I've been making a power mix of rolled oats. You can buy that at your local co-op. So I just take a large tub and I'll mix up so much of this right here, uh, of the rolled oats, okay? I will also add in there uh, black oiled sunflower seeds, boss, they are very high in protein. 
The chickens love it, okay? But again, you're not looking at the most inexpensive thing to buy if you're not growing your own. We are trying to, we are growing a lot of our own sunflowers this year, just as we are our corn. So we do hope to supplement them as natural as possible. But, you know, once a day or once every other day, I'll throw them a treat mix of, right now, the rolled oats, the boss, B-O-S-S, -S, black oiled sunflower seeds. I will also mix in that garlic powder, a little bit of garlic powder in there, mix it up. I will also sprinkle in a little bit of the diatomaceous earth, mix it up. I will also sprinkle in sea kelp. A lot of sites supplement that to their chickens and do very well. It's just really rich with a lot of the uh, nutrients for them and whatnot. Again, this is supplementation. This is not every single day for me. This is a couple of times a week because if you add all this up, it can get pricey for the, as many chickens as I have. Um, now, when the weather cools down, um, I try not to give them a lot of corn in the summer because that takes a lot more of their body to, um, you know, digest this so it heats them up a little bit. So I give them corn in the fall and winter. Again, I pretty much replace the black oil sunflower seeds with the corn. Um, corn is very available. I do the whole corn. I don't do the cracked corn. Um, but I'm hoping to, I have a bag, but again, I do like to use my own non-GMO if possible, which we did last year. Another thing that I do from time to time is I will put molasses uh, in some of their treats. I Instead of buying a uh, rooster booster or sweet feed and all of that type of stuff, which they love, just about every animal loves all that because of the corn and because of the, the molasses that makes it so sweet, um, I will sprinkle in um, some of my own molasses that I get from the Mennonites up here at Muddy Pond. Um, another thing that I do when I can is I supplement them things from my garden. Um, tomatoes are really well, do really well with chickens. I, if it's leftover or diced stuff, they love that. They love slices of cucumber. Um, they love herbs. They also love berries. Uh, they absolutely love strawberries, blackberries, raspberries. So anytime that we pick extra or we have extra, we certainly have that up here. I'm always giving them a treat and they run for any berry. Very good for them as well. What else are we doing here? Um, I will tell you that twice a week in the barn, all of my animals get a dash of apple cider vinegar. Now, I have made my own, but I also buy it. This is obviously organic, and it's Bragg's, the best you can buy, in my opinion. Um, but I use it, and um, I will pour in about a tablespoon per gallon. I do this on Mondays and Thursdays. Now, obviously, if I have a sick hen or if I have um, babies, they get a lot more. But as a, just a general basis, the um, organic apple cider vinegar, I think, is just the way to go to help supplement them. I've gone over all this. Last but not least, I'm just going to just tell you right now, since we've been milking our cow, um, I try to every day, if possible, to give my girls a pour-off of my raw milk. I also give them a pour-off of any type of homemade yogurt, organic yogurt, and my homemade kefir. It's heavy in probiotics, really good for them. Um, natural, and I'm telling you, I really have seen an improvement in what I feel in terms of their appearance and their vigor and whatnot since I have started adding the um, raw milk uh, to them for sure. So just to let you know, not all of these items can be available to you, uh, you know, just, at, you know, but search your health stores, go to a local co-op and just research and do what's best for your flock. Don't be afraid to experiment, do your research, do your homework. But like I said, if you can get them to, to free range some, protected and get them with a really good non-GMO feed, like I said, I use the Tucker milling. This is the basis, okay? Um, all of this is just used to supplement them as much as possible. And uh, if you like what you see here, be sure to su subscribe and check us out on Facebook. We are, of course, on Instagram, and we have our own blog. And we just appreciate your support and all of your questions that are coming in. They're just coming in abundantly, and we're trying so very hard to answer all of them. And we just appreciate y'all. We hope this helped you out today, and we'll talk to you all soon.